Gear Tasting Radio is brought to you by Imminent Threat Solutions. ITS provides knowledge that empowers individuals with indispensable skill sets to explore the world and prevail against all threats. Right now, as a special thank you for all podcast listeners, we're offering 10% off in the ITS store. Simply use the code GTR to save 10% at store.itstactical.com. Welcome to Gear Tasting Radio, where we offer an in-depth look into the usage and philosophy behind the equipment in our lives. I am Brian Black, joined as always by Rob Henderson. Hello. Today we are talking survival versus e e or escape and evasion mm-hmm. kits. Um, so this would be something that's small and compact enough that you could keep on you or in a pocket or something like that. So we're talking about kind of a, a line one item, so to speak. So it's in your clothing or on your belt mm-hmm. or you know, easily accessible like that. And I wanted to start off kind of talking about the differences because I feel like there, there might be some confusion around the differences. There is a difference. Yeah. And there is a difference. Absolutely. Now, however, some of the items that we personally put in some of our kits are different. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can talk about that a little bit too. I think in terms of escape and evasion versus survival, really the big things are long-term versus short-term. Yeah, I think in my opinion, that's kind of that's kind of the first metric to to gauge these by is mm-hmm. that escape and evasion means, hey, I, I got to get out of captivity. I need mm-hmm. to get out of the situation that I'm in and move to a safe location. Therefore, it'll be more immediate than yeah. survival. Now, I mean, survival could even be like, hey, I got stuck overnight and I need to build a fire or something like that. Sure. However... I do still see that as more long term, even yeah. even though escape and evasion could mean that you're detained against your will for sure. a, an indefinite period of time, and you yeah. finally find this this situation to, to escape break in, or and yeah, it's like or right to break now. out, right? Exactly. So they are interchangeable almost in some ways, but yet I'm trying to define. Them I think it depends on what you're facing, because like yeah, that's a good. When way I think to of survival it. kits, like I'm facing nature, like yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna die without food, I'm gonna die without water, mm-hmm. you know. But escape and evasion, it's like I might be facing a person or something that put me in a situation where I'm like, like you said, captive. Yep. So maybe maybe Against I got locked in somewhere, and maybe nobody did it to me on purpose, but I'm locked in, you know. And really, the thing is, a legal restraint too. And right. I, and I say that more to explain that these items are not to escape from law enforcement and things like that. Like that's not. Right. I, I I always say that as a disclaimer because I mean people should know that by now, but I still feel like we need to say it. Yeah. Um, this is not to escape out of the back of a police car no. when they've arrested you. This is this is to get out of a situation where you're illegally held against your will, like in a home invasion scenario or a right. kidnapping or something like that. So um, that's more what these items are for. So like you said, going to the survival side of things. You're more thinking food and water yep. and shelter, mm-hmm. um, which are kind of the core tenets of, of survival in themselves. And, you know, I hate kind of using the term survival, but it is a very good description for what the contents of this kit include. <laughs> you could say living uncomfortably for a few days. Yeah. <laughs> and I, so just to kind of put this out there, we are going to talk through products that, that we sell and, and make and distribute through ITS, but that only comes because there've been years of development and experience mm-hmm. behind these things. I mean, I've, we've tested these things. Multiple people have tested these things. They've been out in the field. They've been overseas. All these things have happened to these products in this, you know, we've been around for nine years now. And one of my goals when I very first started this company was to build a better survival kit because I saw that no one was offering a fairly inexpensive broad scope survival kit that could still be contained in a small container that could fit in a pocket or yeah. a jacket or something like that too. Compact. So yeah. Um, so we have really sourced a lot of good products that are out there on the market to put in these kits or develop them ourselves. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I want to say that with a caveat, like I'm, this yeah. isn't the goal of this is not to be an ad for these products. However, this is what we have to talk through because we've built these because we wanted to make a good one so we made a good one yeah so i mean to kind of break down the survival kit first that's kind of where i want to start um we definitely have split this into a couple of different um it's got so much stuff in it sectors yeah i know it really (laughs) is it's a very full featured kit for being as small as it is so 
I really think that first off it comes down to like if we were to take everything there's redundancy built in this kit too so um, you have kind of multi-purpose items as well as secondary and even tertiary ways of obtaining water or building fire or building shelter or things like that too mm -hmm. so even though there's only let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten i don't know 12 13 14 yeah. items or so in this yeah. in this kit um we can kind of pull these apart you know in their sectors really so there's a bag and this water bag that we have because so the deal is you got to gather water from somewhere, right? Right, and this precludes like you having nothing but the survival Correct. kit on you. Right, like I don't have an algae bottle. Right, um, so water is a big thing. Obviously, you're you can go you know three days without water, mm -hmm. and yes, that can kind of turn into something you might need uh, in a escape and evasion scenario. However. If you're held captive, you're more than likely going to be kept alive. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's tough. that's kind of a dumb yeah. way to describe it, but at the same time, you would hope that that's Right. I'm not their, looking for a water yeah. bag in my E&E kit. Right, right. Um, but, however, I like to carry both of these type of kits. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes um, I will put them together as well because a lot of the things that are in the E&E kit or the SPY kit that we sell, and that's SPIE, that's our little acronym for this, the Special Purpose Insertion and Extraction Kit. So... A lot of these things are small enough to fit in a little bit larger container than our survival kit. Yeah. So we have those multi-purpose containers, and it's a little bit larger, and it's hard-sided, and you can actually use it for a shovel to dig with. So you so, can have everything all in one. Right. So you could kind of put the contents of all of these in one. And we started coming out with this spy pouch, too, to be able to kind of carry just the spy kit uh, by itself in something that's belt-mountable and, and easy to mm -hmm. kind of conceal, too. So... Uh, back to kind of the water deal, that we have the Catadyne um, MicroPure uh, water purification tablets in here, as well as a water bag. So if you gathered water, you have the ability to gather it, as well as purify it. And yeah. that's that's kind of the big thing. Now, obviously, you don't have a container here to be able to boil water in, but that's really... You could suspend a plastic bag above water and probably reach a boil. I've seen things done with that. I haven't personally tested that with our water bag, but I'm not a big fan of that personally. I would rather gather the water and put in a water yeah. purification tab and let it sit and not worry about it right. um, rather than risk melting my, my bag that I, yeah. the one bag I have to collect well, water. And in. also I was going to say, cause like when you boil to purify, I want to get like a heavy rolling boil, sure. not just like, Oh, yep. I see some bubbles. We should be good. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I agree. But you know, the good thing about um, these micro pure tablets is that they will they will protect against uh, or will take care of viruses too, and that's something yeah, that's a big one. That's something that um, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because this has the sodium chloride in it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because we've talked about right, water because, purification before. Yeah, like because you got mechanical those. and chemical yeah. filtration. This is a chemical filtration yep. method, and this is the way you would get rid of viruses. The other things get rid of. Uh, the other impurities in the water. And it's, yeah, I forget yeah. what they're called, but yeah. Yeah, and then, so there's two, four, six, eight, and there's like ten of these in here, so you have plenty to treat. Drink a lot of water. Yeah, plenty to treat water in there. Um, then, you know, moving on to, that's really the the main method of gathering water that's in this kit. So I guess you could lump in. I guess you could use the tin, probably. Duct tape maybe right. in with yeah. this um, yeah. just to fix a hole in the bag if it developed one. Yep. There's a little strip of duct tape in here, too. Uh, but then kind of moving on to fire starting, um, you've got a ferro rod as well as this FRS, which is a folding razor saw, and you can use the back of the saw blade or the actual saw blade itself if you want to um, to be able to, to spark the ferro rod to, to start a fire. And then there's uh, tinder quick tabs in here that are great fire starters but then there's also the the standby boat matches or yep. nato matches whatever you call them um they're waterproof matches that will you know not go out even when you stick them in the snow like i've done that yeah with they're these. weird they, yeah <laughs> it's they, like magic they stay lit they're crazy <laughs> um but you know that's a redundancy there you've got kind of two methods of starting fire within this kit which is great well and we have so we have the third method too with the Oh, Fresnel. yes. I forget about that. I was going to say, because we just talked about this, I think, last week or yeah. the week before, of like having multiple fire things, because that's yeah. my ultimate paranoia. Is like, <laughs> yeah, what if right. I can't get my fire started? Yeah. But there's the old standby Fresnel lens that's kind of like a magnification lens that 
if my dad see, keeps in his wallet to read say, menus. If you see some ants yeah. that you want to burn. <laughs> yeah, but you can harness the power of the sun <laughs> to start a fire. It's very difficult to do this. I have done it before, but this not is not fun. my my favorite method to start a fire, obviously. Um, and then we've also kind of worked in uh, medical into this survival kit, too, which is not something you commonly see in a survival kit, but mm-hmm. we've at least included a package of triple antibiotic and steri strips uh, in here to you yeah. know, kind of treat that could be super useful. cuts and scrapes and things like that so they don't get infected. Um, there's also a desiccant card in here so that, you know, if there is humidity in the container, it, it this will take care of it. Don't eat it. Obviously, if you swim with it, that's a different story. Um, it's a little bit beyond what the desiccant can do. Yeah. Um, there is a signal mirror in here, too. It's got a little plastic piece that you peel off. Yeah, so if you get it, it's not a dull signal mirror. You yeah. have to peel the peeling off. Yes. Um, and it actually says that on the package. Remove clear protective film before use. Um, and then we have some wire, which is good for snares. So you can make a snare to catch food and things like that. Um, and then there's there's also our, um, our compass in here for navigation. Um, and it's the same button compass that's in our spy kit, too. Mm-hmm. So it's a very small, um, it's a it's a it's at least an A-rated, it's not a double, I don't think it's a double A because it's not a Tokyo compass, but it's an A-rated compass and they're very good. We've, Enough to get a general bearing. Yeah, and we haven't gotten a lot of uh, feedback on these developing hard bubbles or anything like mm-hmm. that, too. And obviously, if one happened to develop a bubble, we would definitely replace it for you, but um, we haven't had uh, many warranty issues at all on those. Um, but there's also Kevlar cord in here, which is kind of also in the Escape and Evasion kit, which is perfect for cutting through zip ties with a friction saw or anything like that. Um, but, however, it can be also used. Um, it's it's multi-ply, so there's actually two strands yeah, you could undo woven it. together. So you could undo this to make fishing line if you needed to or um, even use as a secondary snare I need that. to practice my snares. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not big on the snares. I'll have to. It's tough to practice those. I mean, you really have to be patient. Yeah. You, know, you have to be camping somewhere that be there's willing. wildlife yeah. and set it on the game trail or something like that. So, yeah. And then the uh, the folding razor saw. Apart from being able to spark the ferro rod, there's also an actual razor in here for a knife. So you've got a you've got a cutting blade in here. And then the saw itself is actually a saw, and you can you know it cut. works super. Yeah. You it works a lot better than you think it would. Yeah. Yeah, you would think it looks cheap, but yeah, no. It's but actually, if you're going through like medium-sized uh, branches mm-hmm. and stuff for fire starting, yep. that's great. Yeah, so if you're if you need to break apart, you know, sticks for tinder kindling and mm-hmm. fuel, you could kind of do that with it. Yeah, I'm more of the opinion just break them with your hands or yeah. feet or you know that type of thing. But those are kind of the contents of of the survival kit. Again, it kind of addresses those main things uh, that we talked about. Now, this isn't a full featured survival kit. So meaning that there's still things that I would even supplement to take with this if I were relying on this as a survival kit. So I would have some kind of snacks on me, I would have paracord on me, and I would have a survival blanket, and that would kind of round out the yeah. the survival nature of It's of so this. tough to draw that line. Yeah. Of like you just keep putting stuff yeah. in it. Because if you said, hey, you're going to have well, to survive. Those are bigger items, obviously, right. but yeah. yeah. But to keep it pocket size, I think that's a pretty good I've spread. experimented before with vacuum sealing, um, like a space blanket. Mm-hmm. And you can get them pretty small when you vacuum seal them. And, you know, I'm lucky I have access to one. But they're, you know, it's still it's still kind of a large piece to put into something you're carrying in your pocket. So, yeah. um, however, if it's more jacket weather or something like that, it's perfect for that because you can still stash paracord in a survival blanket in a jacket and it doesn't mm-hmm. take up a ton of space. Uh, but those are the things I would kind of look towards supplementing. And I know I have some, uh, like, bullion packages in oh, that's my, a great in my idea. other yeah. survival kit. They're very small. They're compact. Um, I, they usually don't have expiration dates on them because yeah. you buy them in a big pack. And Salt. I always forget where, you know, what the date is. But yeah. I'll typically switch them out every couple of years or something like it that. It gives you at least some good, like, if electrolytes they, and stuff. If I open my survival kit and they're, like, hard and crunchy, I typically <laughs> replace it. No, that's a snack. <laughs> Yeah, so at least you have something to mix with water so that if you can't find a, a real food source, you've at least got something. Mm-hmm. Um, and then moving on to kind of the E&E side of things, we've got more tools for, you know, literal escape and evasion. So yeah. getting through locks or um, anything that you might be restrained by, and that's kind of the goal with this. So, you know, not only are there handcuff keys, but there's, you know, one of the 
one of the picks that we advocate having with this kit. They come separately, but it's our two-piece titanium flat set. But the single pin pick that comes with this set is perfect for um, getting under a, a handcuff lock with if you needed to. And, mm-hmm. you know, the reason I even talk about handcuffs, just to kind of put that out there, is that the technology is so old. It's from 1919. It's, you know, it's old technology. We're still They're still being utilized. Anybody can buy a pair of law enforcement-grade handcuffs on Amazon and, you know, detain somebody against their will with them. So, therefore, I think it's important that everybody knows Absolutely. knows the uh, – you know, how to get out of those things. Well, and we've talked about it before, but law enforcement officers have their techniques for handcuffing people. And so, like, they're not just putting the handcuffs on you and relying on them to be the be-all, end-all. Well, I've picked a lot of handcuffs in my life, and if an officer handcuffed me the right way, you know, according to their technique, I wouldn't be able to get out of it. No, you can't do it. Just FYI. So, yeah, Um, not for that. Correct. Um, More than likely, a dumb criminal is going to, you know, stupidly handcuff you Yeah, they're looking for the quick way out. Right. Um, again, we've also got the, the button compass repeated because there is still kind of a necessity to have cardinal direction if you're in an escape mm-hmm. scenario. Um, and then we include a quick stick and easy decoder. So one of the one of the items, the easy decoder is very thin and flexible, and it's made for um, getting in multi-wheel uh, combination locks to open those or bypass them. Um, and then the quick stick is to bypass just normal padlocks with a keyway. Um, then you've also got a handcuff shim. So really, there's kind of three ways to get out of a handcuff in this kit. And you, not only do you have the handcuff shim, but you have the kind of the single pin side pick of those, uh, the two-piece picks. Uh, but you also have a couple of handcuff keys or a little polymer handcuff keys are in here, too. Mm-hmm. There's two of them. Um, and then you've got this little diamond wire saw, which takes an incredible amount of time to get through I don't know if I've ever metal. told that. I went through a padlock with one of those, yeah. and it, I did it while I was watching TV. So how TV. long did it take you? It took like an hour and a half. Yeah. But but it can be it, done. In an escape situation or a yeah. containment situation, I have an hour and a half to sit there and yeah. crank on it. You would hope. Well, yeah. I hope <laughs> yeah. So. But yeah, it took, it took an inordinate amount of time. Yeah. Um, then we've also got the Kevlar cordage in here, and again, for friction sawing through zip ties or any kind of plastic restraint. Yeah, that's such a great method. Yep. And then we've got some um, coated leader wire, which I don't really like saying what it's for. It's but just for yeah. it, when you need wire. Yeah, we need wire to... To escape. To... Uh, from something yeah. or someone. To save your neck. Yes, there you go. <laughs> that's right. Save your neck. <laughs> hint, hint. Um and then there's another FRS or folding razor saw in here, too. Of course, it's murdered out. It's you know, the blacked out yeah, version, yeah. Because, you know, you might, people might see your saw. Wanna, yeah, draw your attention with that blaze that orange. Neon right. blaze orange <laughs> one. Um, and then there's a very, very small ceramic razor blade, which is very interesting. It's super sharp, mm-hmm. um, and it can actually cut through a lot of things, believe it or not. So um, that's a very interesting, small, concealable piece of, of kit that's in yeah. this. I, th- I don't know if we've mentioned it, but something we've talked about before is taking these different elements and putting them in different spots. Yes. So there's lots of different uh, storage areas for something like a ceramic razor blade. Yeah, and I mean, even though we have a, a spy pouch that's dedicated for these tools, there's still a lot of inherent value in putting these tools separately, mm-hmm. you know, concealed in different places around your body, too. So there's always always that as well. So. I don't but, have time every morning to slip picks into my socks. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, smart you right. would go, yes, I need to do this. smarter me that had yeah. the time would do right. that. But yeah. <laughs> Dumb you that got caught would go, yeah. man, I should have put those picks in my socks. The one morning. day I don't put picks in my socks. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, granted we've gone over, you know, tools and things that, you know, we have in these kits, but you can really put these kits together sure. um, yourself. There's nothing that says you have to buy pre-made kits. I mean, I, I've built a lot of survival kits in my life way before I started ITS, and that's kind of how I came upon most of these things because yeah. I wanted to have good stuff that that wasn't really out there, so that's kind of what we've come up with. I mean, we put a lot of thought and detail into these kits too. So, I mean, even down to the little ferro rod that we include, we've even got a little rubber cap over the end mm-hmm. so that you can grip it when it's wet you know, because I have tried to use a ferro rod before, it sucks. you know, with just a uh, grabbing a ferro rod yeah, and like, I have problems with it. Yeah. So, yeah, not fun. But, you know, even the length of the ferro rod is good for, you know, what you need to strike. And to that's be able a big to, ferro rod. Yeah. You would get a, you would get a lot out of that. Yep. Agreed. So. But anyway, that's kind of that's kind of the difference. I wanted to talk through some of the, the similarities and differences, obviously, between survival kits and 
escape and evasion kits because mm-hmm. there there is a lot of crossover, but there's also I think a lot of confusion out there as to what they really are. So, yeah. you know, yes, they are two distinct types of kit, uh, but at the same time, you could put together one. Yeah, looking at them side by side, they're survival, not survival escape and evasion type yeah. kit, and probably have everything you need. So, you know, the only thing that's really not covered in this is kind of a, a waterproof element to a lot of this stuff. So. You know, even though we have a, a nice case that it comes with, we've got this crush-proof case mm-hmm. for the survival kit, it's not waterproof. So yeah, we do have a gasket seal around our MPC, so that at least gives you some water protection. It's not mm-hmm. completely 100% waterproof. You can't scuba dive with it or anything. I'm thinking right. you'd eventually get water in there. Uh, but at least we'll give you water protection if you're, you know, you happen to jump into a lake and jump out or something like that. But Desiccant won't help. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and hopefully you don't get water in your kit. But yeah, yeah, that's a little bit of the similarities and differences. All right, thanks for listening to Gear Tasting Radio. Remember, if you have questions, use the pound tag Gear Tasting on any social media network, and we'll get them answered here on the show or our video show, Questions Over Coffee. Uh, be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, just like we say every time. You would very much help us out if you could leave a review, and hopefully it would be five stars. Apple will show our podcast around. They'll just hand it out to people willy-nilly and you know, earn you extra subscribers. That's, that's how it works. That's, the alg- <laughs> that's called an algorithm. Yeah. That's how the algorithm works. <laughs> Hawking it on the street corner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, last but not least, check out our membership. We've got some details on that in the show notes or episode Intel, um, on how to purchase a membership to support ITS. We've got some great things to give you in return. So thanks for listening and we'll see you next week.